Hi, my name is Kieran Milne. I'm a tech lead with the Juniper Networks certification program in education services here at Juniper Networks. Uh, this is our final class of Service Basics Learning Byte, and we are going to finish off here with remarking. So as always, we start with our you know, uh, overview page with the typical cost stages as you move through a Junos device. Uh, and as always, I won't spend any, any time on this page, but you are welcome to pause and review any of the previous uh, uh, topics if you like. So, you know, we get to the end of our cost process here, our, our last stage, and, and we need to step back for just a moment. Uh, you know, we started with a packet entering our Junos device, and we did several things. We classified the packet into a forwarding class, and we may have done some policing, and then we got into queuing and scheduling, and, and now we're going to send our packet out onto the wire, downstream to the next device in the network. Um, however, you know, we've done all this work with, with costs here in this device, and if we just send the packet out, we're really going to lose all that prioritization of one packet over another down in the next device or, or anywhere else in the network. We, we don't preserve all of this work that we've done. Um, and so what we want to do at this point is look at remarking. And remarking's function is really to, to you know, solve exactly what we were just talking about. It's to preserve some form of this priority of these packets uh, as they move out and downstream into the network. What we're able to do is we're able to uh, with you know with marking just simply attach cost settings or assign cost values to packets as they exit our device and uh, you know these cost values are assigned based on all of the work we've just done inside the device so our forwarding class settings and maybe our packet loss priority settings uh, those values can be translated uh, into cost values within the packet header and and those can be used at the next device in the network um, to again reassign forwarding classes and packet loss priority values and give some sort of prioritization in the next device based on the previous knowledge from what we did in this device. So in the diagram here in the middle, you can see uh, you know, data moving through our router or our device and a couple of different forwarding classes, FC1, FC3, FC2. Uh, and as we come to the egress point in our device, the outbound interface, we come into these rewrite rules. And, and it's as simple as you might imagine. You know, We're going to assign um, uh, cost values, diff serve code points, or MPLS uh, cost bits, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, we're going to assign those bits to our forwarding class data based on the forwarding class settings and the PLP settings. Uh, and a good way to think of this is, you know, really what we're doing is the reverse function of classification. When uh, a packet entered our device, we took that raw basic packet and we assigned it to some forwarding class and possibly with a PLP value. Uh, and we're simply doing the reverse here. We're taking that information that we assigned at the beginning and we're reusing it to mark the packet with some cost value. Now, configuration for this is fairly straightforward. Uh, for remarking, we're using something called rewrite rules. And what they do is simply allow us to map our forwarding class and PLP settings to cost values. You can uh, assign diff serve code points for IPv4 and v6. You can assign uh, cost bits in the MPLS header, in an Ethernet header, and what have you. Uh, so these are configured using what's called a rewrite table. And you will apply this table to an interface or a VLAN. And all of this is done under the class of service stanza. So the first chunk is, is on the left side there. We're going to define the rewrite table. So you can see under the class of service section, we have an example of a rewrite rule. In this case, uh, we're using an IPv4 rewrite rule with that keyword DSCP. And that defines a, a v4 uh, rewrite rule. And we'll simply walk through the example here. So for the forwarding class BE data, traffic that, that is currently forwarding class BE data with a loss priority of high, well, the code points that we're going to assign as we egress the device are all zeros. Um, and similarly, for forwarding class traffic of BE data with a loss priority of low, we're going to assign code points of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0001. 
And you can see, you know, we simply move down through the forwarding classes and uh, with the PLP values as they may have been assigned in the device. And you assign the appropriate code points and move through all of your forwarding classes and all of your PLP settings until you've defined all of the types of traffic that you want to, uh, you know, tag from a cost perspective uh, as it egresses the device. Now we take our rewrite table here and we need to apply it somewhere. So on the right side, you can see we've applied uh, Still under the class of service section, we've applied our uh, v4 remarker uh, rewrite table uh, under an interface, and it's our egress interface in this case. And you can see under uh, GE000, unit 0, rewrite rules, again, DSCP for a v4, an IPv4 uh, rewrite table here, and we've, we've uh, referenced our table. So let's see how this looks on uh, real equipment. Uh, we've got our host on the left side there in the network, uh, our small lab network. We're going to send some traffic through that R6 router and over through down to a, another downstream device as well. We're going to apply uh, a rewrite rule or rewrite table on our GE0012 egress interface on R6. And we will look at some uh, counters and show commands on the downstream router to see how that traffic is arriving at that router and if the cost bits and the cost values are, are being assigned correctly from R6. All right, so before we get started, let me just show you the, uh, the windows and tabs we have uh, here for this demo. The first tab is our host, so the, the device in the diagram that will be sending the traffic uh, across the network. This next tab is R6, that's the, the router on the diagram where we're going to send traffic through. So this is the one that's going to do the inbound classification of the traffic, and on egress it's going to remark the traffic and set the cost bits appropriately. And I'm going to add one more router here. This is a, a router called R2, and it is actually the endpoint, the destination of that traffic we'll be sending through the network. We're going to be able to use a, a method here to watch the incoming traffic and determine whether the uh, cost markings from R6 came through the network and were set properly as they come into this device here. So let me show you a couple of things on R6, the, the main router that we'll be working with. First of all, uh, from an ingress perspective, we have a firewall applied to our ingress interface. So when traffic comes in, uh, you can see here from the firewall filter, traffic matching port 80 is going to be assigned to the forwarding class called BE data. And traffic that comes in on port 12345 is going to be uh, mapped to the forwarding class premium data. So that's our ingress situation. Now let me show you the class of service stanza, which will show us the settings that are in place currently for our uh, egress settings. Uh, the key part we want is right here. There's our rewrite rules stanza. You can see that we're mapping forwarding class BE data to these diff serve code points 000111 and then we're mapping forwarding class premium data out to DSCP bits 111000. So uh, the rest of the stanza here simply uh, sets up a couple of of queues and some schedulers on them and facilitates the, the traffic flow here. The other thing to note here is there's our interfaces statement. Again, we're within the class of service stanza here and we're applying our rewrite rule at the logical unit level. Uh, this particular interface happens to use unit 126 and there's our rewrite rule applied to an interface right there. So with that in place, let's try a couple things out here. So first of all, let's send some traffic. It's going to be 100 packets on port 80. So they're traveling through the network through R6. Now let's just quickly uh, check out our firewall counters here for our ingress traffic. Notice that the inbound traffic, there's a filter uh, counter called BE data. So we know that our traffic was classified to the BE data forwarding class. And now let's move to our endpoint router here and see what came in. Now what you're looking or going to look at here is I've set up a couple of filters to classify incoming traffic. And you can see uh, I had sent 100 packets previously already. And here come 100 more packets to our BE data DSCP bits 000111. And so let's go back here and recall that I had that second firewall filter in place on our middle router specifying if we match port 12345, we will send that traffic to um, uh, the premium data forwarding class. So there goes the traffic on port 12345. Let's check again our firewall um, counters on the ingress point of our middle router. And now you can see for the premium data counter, we have our 100 packets that we just sent.
And now to check our uh, rewrite, our rewrite rules and our markers for the outbound of this router, we're going to go downstream to the endpoint or to the next hop at least. We're going to re-enter our show firewall and the counters that I've set up here show that for traffic coming in here, we can see there are our 100 packets. So we can confirm and we, we know at this point that uh, remarking on our middle router, our R6 router, is working properly. All right, so, you know, as I always mention at this point in, uh, in the Learning Byte, you know, cost is a really large topic and uh, there are lots of different details to, to uh, get more information on. We certainly can't cover them all here. Uh, and also of note, uh, you know, some cost settings are particular to certain hardware platforms. So you'll really want to make sure you check out the documentation for your particular device and make sure you know all of the, the details and permutations of the, the uh, detailed cost functionality for your product line. This takes us to the end of our Cost Basics Learning Byte series, um, but you can certainly check any of the earlier uh, Cost Basics Learning Bytes if you haven't seen them yet, and of course you're welcome to go on and check, uh, check out any of the other Learning Bytes you like. A couple of training courses as always, uh, Junos Writing Essentials has a cost chapter within it, and Junos Class of Service has a, uh, you know, two full days of material including a full chapter on uh, remarking. Product documentation as I mentioned before, and finally that day one uh, deploying basic QoS guide, a uh, free download if you like. So that takes us to the end of our, our Cost Basics series. I hope you've uh, enjoyed it and learned a lot, and um, perhaps we'll catch you on one of the next Learning Bytes another time. Uh, have a good one. Bye for now. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning Paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.